Looks back here. The other right. There you go. This right. Excellent. I believe you've had too much to drink. I believe you're DWI. But we'll make that final determination over at the sheriff's office. Okay, we're doing he's, not, he's not a bad dog. He's not a bad dog. He's just a puppy. All right. He's just a puppy. We know. Nice. What's his name? What, what's his puppy's name? His name's Blitz. Blitz. He doesn't really know it, though. He doesn't know it, though. So be nice. Is he your puppy? He's a good boy. I know he's Blitz, all right. He's a good boy. All right. All right, we'll be good to the puppy. We're going to take you over to the sheriff's office and finish up our DWI investigation over there. Okay? This young fella was a passenger, and apparently he ate some windshield. So he's got pretty good uh, glass cuts. No bad, no bad laceration I could see. What we're going to do now is finish the accident investigation. Uh, she clipped a couple of delineator posts. What? Oh, man, he ran, and he's in the river. <laughs> oh. He's in the river. Yeah. <laughs> he it off. Where'd he go? He's in the river, swimming around. Right down here. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope it, I, hope it, I hope he doesn't drown. Right, get the <laughs> 2189. Come on, you see about getting a boat down here. Uh, the passenger has decided he wanted to take a swim, and he's now in the Brad River. And we're going to need a couple of boats down here to go get him. That's clear. We need it. I don't think this boy is going to be able to stay up very long. He's already out of sight around the first bend south of the river, or east of the river towards uh, Brazoria County. That's not him. That's another guy. This is a guy that, that we had out here. His name's Scott. And he's out of Missouri City also. You probably call their police department. And they probably know who he is. This guy that was with her? Yeah. Okay. His name's Scott. Well, this, is the, this is the that ID. Might have been the ID he was using to get into clubs or whatever. I don't, he's a couple years younger than I am. Okay. Uh, well, this is what he gave me while he was sitting on the ground. Okay, well, that's that's Mark. That's not Scott. He's in school with this guy, too. Oh, you know I, both of them? Yeah, I know both of them. Okay. And uh, they found some marijuana up in the front seat of the film canister. Okay. So that's probably why he bolted like he did on that. Yeah. There are alligators in this river. Uh, we have snakes. If he makes it up into the into the thicket there, uh, I'm not sure which is worse, the thicket or the river. The, there's wild hogs out there. I sure wouldn't want to want to be in either place right now. Providing roadside assistance is one of the major missions of the Highway Patrol. That was foremost on the mind of Colorado State Trooper Tom Medina when he caught sight of a stranded motorist. Come here, partner. Okay. Is that the only thing that's wrong with it? Just this tire here? So where, where, where are you going? I was going out to uh, uh, Westminster. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I was just going to... I don't know what to do now. I'm just okay. trying to get my stuff out of the car right okay. now. Okay, what we're going to do, go ahead and put your stuff back in the car. We're going to get you, uh, we're going to call you uh, a tow truck, get you off the lane. Go ahead and put your stuff back in the car. What are you looking for? Your what? My keys. Okay, well. So I can go home and get in the house. Well, I'll tell you what, partner. Oh, right now, I'll let you get this vehicle over here. Come on, come with me. Get to, grab your shoes and come with me. Close the door. Okay, could you please send me the next available tow? And, uh... I have a possible uh, 1055 here. Uh, I'm going to see if uh, he wants to do roadsides. Hey, partner. Come on over here. You? Yeah. Now? Hey, okay. you got alcohol in your breath, OK? You been drinking? Since around 11 o'clock. No, no. You been drinking? Around 11 o'clock. OK. What I want to know is if you want to do some voluntary roadside for me, okay? So let me know whether you're able to uh, drive or not. I just want to know how much, you okay. know, your ability is being impaired. You sure? Right. These are voluntary, okay? Yeah. Okay. 
Now, what I want you to do is I want you to follow the tip of my pen with your eyes only, okay? okay. And I tell you to do so. Not your head, just your eyes. You understand that? Just my eyes? Yeah. Okay. Okay, here we go. So this one has to be behind this one. Yeah, that's fine. You, you can start when you're ready. That's what I'm saying. This one has to be behind this one. Yeah. Right between, before my, my left foot. Right. Okay. So they have to be like... Heel to toe, toe, toe. Like this. Like that. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place you under arrest. We're driving under the influence of alcohol, okay? Who, me? Yeah, you. I want you to turn around, please. Okay. Okay? I want you to spread your feet. Look up. Put your hands behind you. Put your hands out behind you. Put your hands out behind you. No, no, no. Behind, towards me. Towards me. Right there. Bend over at the waist. Bend over at the waist and look up. There you go. Bend over some more. Put your hands out behind you. Come on. Put your hands out behind you. Behind me? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to search. Are you having weapons on you? No. The only thing I have is this, sir. Right here. This is the only thing I have. Only oh, yeah, eyes. Miller, like, yeah. Come on, come on this way. In here. And watch your head. I can't lose them up no more. No, no. I'm just saying. Right here. Yeah. Let me see if there's any chapstick in here for my lips. Man, I ain't gonna put no chapstick on your lips. Look at this. Next, a Massachusetts state trooper spots trouble at a busy Boston airport. Most calls answered by the Massachusetts State Police concern problems on streets and highways. Recently, they responded to a call of a different kind in one of the most public places of all, an airport. On October 27, 1991, at approximately 8.30 a.m. at Boston's Logan Airport, Massachusetts State Trooper Michael Doyle was on foot patrol at the North Terminal. He notices something unusual at the Skycap stand. Trooper Doyle could see someone acting in a suspicious, highly excited manner and was upsetting a nearby passenger. Doyle could not hear what was being said, but he had a feeling that something was about to happen. The man was Sahid M. Muhammad, who was intoxicated and enraged. He was complaining to anyone who would listen that he was being suspended by his boss, John Mailer, the Skycap supervisor. As Muhammad caught sight of Trooper Doyle, he tried to control himself. When Doyle was closer, he sensed that something was wrong. But when he looked back, Muhammad was gone. It's out of my hands. John Mailer, Muhammad's supervisor, was leading Muhammad back to his office to officially suspend him for erratic behavior toward a customer the week before. As they made their way to the office, Muhammad vehemently declared his innocence. Mailer was sympathetic, but he explained to Muhammad that there was nothing he could do. Meanwhile, Trooper Doyle followed his instincts and waited for Muhammad to return to the platform area. But he was called to duty. Muhammad continued to argue as Supervisor Mailer wrote the letter of suspension. The more Mailer sympathized with Muhammad, the madder he becomes. At about 8.40 a.m., Trooper Doyle was inside the upper level of the airport terminal. He was approached by the passenger who witnessed Muhammad's threats at the Skycap station. The passenger told Trooper Doyle that he overheard a man saying he was going to kill his supervisor. Trooper Doyle got a brief description and knew it was Muhammad. What kind of company is it? They do not give me another chance. It is not fair. What have I done? Muhammad was in a wild rage as Supervisor Mailer was preparing to sign the letter of suspension. It happened. You must believe me. I must be able to tell somebody about what really happened. It is simply not fair to say I'm making a big deal. Muhammad slowly slid the knife out. I will kill you. I will kill you. After a brief struggle, they fall to the floor and continue to fight for the knife. Which way is the Skycap office? Skycap office downstairs, down there. 
They continued to struggle for control of the knife. Muhammad kept telling Mailer that he was going to kill him. Mailer began yelling for help. Tuber Doyle made his way through the terminal towards the supervisor's office. Trooper Doyle forced his way into the office. He quickly grabbed Muhammad's arm and forced him back. Trooper Doyle wrestled Muhammad to the floor and tried to subdue him. As Mailer looked on in shock, Trooper Doyle spun Muhammad around and after a brief struggle, pulled Muhammad's arms back and handcuffed him. Trooper Doyle quickly checked Supervisor Mailer's condition. Mailer was shaken, but he was not cut or injured. There is no doubt Trooper Doyle had saved his life. Sahid M. Muhammad was arrested for assault with intent to murder. When he appeared in court, he was charged with assault with a dangerous weapon. He received 18 months in the House of Corrections. Muhammad was also ordered to undergo psychiatric counseling. Uh, any accident scene of a bento, if I saved a child or assisted in someone saving someone's life, it was probably the most meaningful thing I could do in my career. Trooper Michael Doyle was awarded the Medal of Merit by the Massachusetts State Police for outstanding dedication to duty on April 22nd, 1992. like the smoke over there, so we definitely got a legitimate Next, fire. Next, we'll CHP it. officers find more than just smoke Point when they two. investigate a suspicious fire. Yeah, Some smoke over there, so we definitely got a legitimate fire. We'll find out uh, to get some of these people out of our way. Get up there and see what my partner needs. Let's go, let's go, let's go. He's got two in custody now. He's just asked for two more units. Uh, he hasn't put the air in a clearance, and he hasn't said he's going for you either, so... Who hit him? What? Who hit him? You don't know? I guess they got in a fight. It was those two? No, we had a fight, sir. Oh, that's the fire start? I don't know. See, I was at the, I was at the ramp, okay? And he was, he got the ramp to pick me up, okay? He, he did? Yes. This gentleman here? Yes, he did. Is this your husband? Where do you live? Well, that's for we've been we've been here uh, eight years. Okay. okay. Who who punched him? <laughs> this man and that man. Which ones is that? Those two. The first Those, two? The first two. Those two. What about the guy in the end? What do you have and to do? And the man, with the man right there. He did with a crutch. He punched him too? And he did with a crutch. That's why his face is messed up. Which one of those guys over there punched him? I know you don't want to go to jail, sir. But this guy started the fire. I understand that. I understand. I understand he started the fire. He's probably going to pay the price for that too, but we want to know who punched him. Okay, I want him hung for it. Okay, okay. okay. Jim, Jim got him, okay? Jim punched him? Which one's Jim? I was just saying. That's your friend Robert down there? Is he a friend of yours? Yeah, he's a friend of mine, yes. Me Robert's, and him just barely came back, yeah. Robert's telling me that you're the one that punched this gentleman in the face. Why'd you punch him in the face? The guy threw lighter fluid on top of me, okay? So you punched him in the face? I knocked the lighter fluid out of his hand. And he, that started the fire? He fell into the tree in the branch. No, that just started the fire. He said he's going to kill me and all this kind of stuff, and he got mad at me. Then he left. So I went over... Hit him with? I went over and talked to this guy. Well, what'd you I hit just him with? pushed him out of the way. I didn't even hit him. He fell into a branch of the tree. Oh, what your buddy Robert says. What'd you punch him with, Jim? My hand. Your hand? Yeah. A fist or a hand or what? Just a hand, that's all. Looks like you hit him pretty good. Just once? The man was drunk, man. Just once? I hit him under the eye someplace. How many times? I don't know. Twice, probably. Twice? I didn't hit him more than that, no, because he ran away. Well, how come you told me before you didn't hit him? He said he said he was going to burn down the whole camp. The guy's crazy. Hey, you never see it. wasn't a loot kick. And he's on a fire and he ripped, wiped out our tent. Sir, do you want to go to the have. No, sir, I'm okay. Hold
He must have got hit. We're not sure if she punched him or... The There's probably better options than punching him in the face, you know? Maybe tackle him or something. Punching him's not probably not a real good idea. How dangerous it is to drive while under the influence. But even if you don't drink and drive, you're still in danger from others who do. So make sure everyone in your vehicle is buckled up. That way, even if you can't avoid a collision with a drunk driver, you're taking advantage of all the protection your vehicle can provide. the Highway Patrol and State Police Agencies of America. Thank you for watching.